So we are running a little late and we appreciate you hanging around. So we're going to uh, decrease the musical portion uh, because our musicians played more earlier. They'll play a little less uh, now. And we do hope you will stay to hear Mark Sakamoto say a few words about where do we go from here. And also we will close out the evening with our uh, MP from Winnipeg, uh, Robert Papamolet, who will do an honor greeting, a musical honor greeting for us. So we'll do that in about 20 minutes. So please stay around. And also, I want people to feel welcome to sit here if you don't mind seeing the audience, because I know it's been a long evening on your feet. But do, you know, feel free to sit here without the no, we still have uh, business. So my office is actually not far from here. My office is right at Wellington University. And uh, we're going to keep going. It took a 10 year lease. We built the office this time. So,
Victoria, you see, unceded post Scottish territory. I would like to introduce to you Derek Sukhoe, a younger Yonsei, probably more of uh, your idea of what a Yonsei looks like, uh, a very hard working member of the Gala Committee and designer of the amazing Gala Booklet, which is in your hands. Derek Sukhoe. Thanks so much, Sam. It's really such an honor to be up here with some of the leaders of the Japanese Canadian community. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but uh, bear with me, please. So, uh, as Kim said, I'm a Yonse, which means I'm fourth generation Japanese Canadian, um, which means my grandparents immigrated to Canada. I grew up in North York, which is one of, one of the most diverse neighborhoods in, in GTA. I was only four years old when my identity was questioned for the first time. I was playing on the playground with my twin brother, and we were approached by another kid, and he asked me, are you Chinese? So I looked at my brother in bewilderment, and we said in unison, uh, Chinese food? As a child, my knowledge of Japan was uh, pretty much limited to sushi, hula kitty, and Pokemon. Despite my parents' best efforts to expose me to Japanese culture, uh, it wasn't always hard. I, I tended to blend in uh, while differentiating myself uh, from things outside of my heritage. When we tend to think of America, we think of a melting pot. When we tend to think of Canada, we, uh, we think of a mosaic. But when it came to my heritage, it felt more melting than mosaic. I realized that this week, I was speaking to my mother, Nancy, uh, it was the first time I talked to her about internment in many years. I'm so happy to be involved with uh, organizing this gala as it is a way for me to show how grateful I am uh, for the tireless efforts for those who fought for redress. Among many people, my uncle Frank uh, has dedicated much of his life to sharing his experiences with the JC community, high schools, and other Canadians. It's crucial that students learn about the internment and redress, especially since it always wasn't taught in high school. Events like this gala refresh conversations about our history, not only within, but outside of our community. The fact that the Japanese community has melted into the Canadian mosaic is our strength, not our weakness. The process of working as, as a team with this multi-generational members of the gala committee has been one of the avenues gaining new perspectives and connections um, to my Japanese Canadian identity. I've learned so much more about JC history and increased my awareness of our unique voice to encourage and help other marginalized communities across Canada. A result that has deepened knowing my sense of who I am. Thank you so much. Japanese Canadian um, family to settle in that part of Toronto. In my family, I grew up influenced by what we would call, now call shame culture. Don't do anything bad because you'll be the one to stand out and the whole Japanese Canadian community will look bad because of you. Or it's a good thing you don't have small eyes because then you look more oriental. My most important teachings came to me as an adult not as a child, um, by my Nisei great aunt Shigemi Maoka. She was spunky and wise and funny, and I am grateful that my sons Trevor and Jeremy got a chance to st spend some time with her, to listen to her stories. Even if they don't remember her stories, they will remember her voice. Because intergenerational relationships are crucial and give life to our community identity. We celebrate our elders and redress today because we need to keep doing things to stand out. Our story matters, not only to us, but to Canada and to other groups who look to us to stand with them. And so it is an honor for me to introduce our guest speaker this evening, Mark Sakamoto, lawyer, narrator of America's uh, wonderful a documentary swimming upstream, author and winner of the 2018 Canada Reads competition for his 2014 book, Forgiveness, A Gift from My Grandparents. Through his grandparents' stories and his family's stories, 
He has gifted us with a moving personal story to strengthen the complexity of our collective history and help us as a country to live into forgiveness even as hate tries to seep its way into normalcy. Mark Zuckerberg. Hi everybody, it's getting a little late, I'm not going to speak for too, too long, but whenever I speak at events like this, I always feel uh, a little bit fraudulent. And I feel fraudulent because it was my grandparents, Mitsue and Hideo, that lived through the injury. I, um, I simply listened and committed it to paper. So I hope that uh, genetically and metaphorically you can see the giants um, of whom shoulders I'm standing on in my family. But also you can't be, you're, everyone is so struck tonight I think by the giants that are in our shared community. And we treat them like Hollywood stars. We don't even use their last names, we all know them so well. America, Raymond, Bruce, Art, our beloved happy warrior, a high school principal from Winnipeg that would not let a Canadian Prime Minister push him around. Joy. How I've come to love Troy. Carrie was here. I always lie. I always say that Carrie's my sister. Um, Carrie Sakamoto, another wonderful author. Um, one of the really beautiful moments of tonight was Bruce talking about Raymond and their relationship and the power of positive role models. And if Carrie and I are a stream. Uh, running down a mountain, uh, joy is our snow at the top of that mountain. I don't think that you quite know how important it was for others that you found your own voice. So thank you for that, Shane. We're gathered here to commemorate the 30th anniversary of obviously the Canadian government's apology and redress, but we're celebrating so very much more. Look around this room, look at what we are celebrating. I remember in Medicine Hat watching my grandma open um, that letter from Ottawa. Most of the government letters that were addressed to her in the past were nothing but pain and they were nothing but injustice. But this letter was different and she sat down at her chair in her living room and she opened it up and this letter said that you were wronged. This letter said that you are every bit as Canadian as your neighbors and that we are very sorry for the injury that you suffered. And it was the most meaningful letter that she had ever, ever received. Our nation's finest poet, in my humble opinion, Leonard Cohen wrote, there is a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. And the actions taken 30 years ago, forced by the champions that are in this room, so many of them, were that light for us. My, grand uh, my great grandfather, um, Mitsue's dad, Toro, his name was, had this wonderful saying, such prescient words, he said, what you put in your head is the only thing that cannot be taken away. And he said that in the 30s, before the war, to my grandmother. And boy, did she need that. Because obviously in 42, 43, the Canadian government undertook a campaign of ethnic cleansing. And I'm not taking creative license. 
I'm applying the articles of the Geneva Convention. And history doesn't operate in a vacuum. Timelines matter. Facts on the ground matter. Because the facts elicit the intent behind the action. So what was the intent? And what can they tell us about today? What lessons can be learned from 42 and 43? Here is the most illuminating fact that comes out of Mitsue's story and our shared story. When hate came for my grandmother, it came wrapped in the flag. It's like the oldest trick in the book. It came under the auspices of national defense. It almost always does. And it's almost always a lie. But folks can be hurted by fear. And they can allow those hateful forces to do terrible, god-awful things in response to it. Do we see that today? Do we feel a sense of that almost every single time we pick up a newspaper today? When Forgiveness was published in 2014, it was a family memoir. It was almost quaint. And today in 2018, unfortunately, it's an alarm bell. The end result of the hateful campaign that racist forces in British Columbia so successfully waged turned Mitsui and Hideo into enemies of the state. And their only crime was their ethnicity. And as we know, there, there was no enemy. It was completely fabricated. The entire heads of the Canadian security apparatus, the RCMP, the Army, the Navy, they all testified under oath that there was no Japanese Canadian threat, internally or externally. And here's where those facts come in handy. Right? I mean, the historians among us will know that mass internment really happened in 43. And that's after the Battle of Midway in 42. Like, if the Japanese Army and Navy were invading the west coast of North America, they were coming in rowboats. It was all fake. It was all made up. Powerful factions wanted the Japanese gone. They didn't like them. We didn't look like them. We didn't eat like them. And they were very good fishermen. So they were a threat, both culturally and economically. So they were removed. They were Canadian, and they were removed from their home. But we're amongst survivors. And they somehow survived those injurious years. But where I think it becomes really important is that living and surviving wasn't their greatest victory. Their greatest victory was how they went on to live their lives. They used forgiveness to cleanse their hearts. They were absolutely determined not to pass on those transgressions of those most injurious years onto their children. And right there, that's the essence of forgiveness. That's what this journey has taught me. Forgiveness is not a transaction. Forgiveness is a way of life. Forgiveness has almost nothing to do with the past. It's all about tomorrow. It's all about knowing in your heart that no matter how ugly, and no matter how painful your yesterday was, it will not impede on your tomorrow. And that's the legacy that Mitsue and Hideo left for me. So I am and we are all 
the benefactors of our ancestors getting up. We thrive in their shared and quiet courage. We step into their tenacity, and we were all standing on the shoulders of giants. So the question is, what do we do with this gift? How do we pay, pay it forward? How do we say thank you? And what does our shared experience as Japanese Canadians have to offer our fellow Canadians? And to answer this, I think that we need to go back a little bit in time to when Prime Minister King passed an order in council, or was about to pass an order in council to expel all Japanese Canadians, all people of Japanese descent to Japan at the end of the war. And the silence in Canada was deafening. But there was a light. There was a light. And the rabbi at the Holy Blossom Temple, Rabbi Feinstein, rallied over a thousand people at Toronto's Jarvis Collegia. And he said, I am here on behalf of six million Jews who were slaughtered for no other reason than being Jewish. The ghost of Hitler still walks in Canada. And the thing for which Hitler stood has been inscribed on the order of counsel which punishes little children for crimes they could not have committed. Our experience is a stain on Canadian history, and it is also a warning. I think the way that we repay the bravery and the grace that we witnessed in our own ordinary personal lives is to ensure that others who are targeted solely on the basis of race and creed have those voices of support. We need to be those voices of support. Our community, we speak, we come to this issue with real authenticity. So therein lies our challenge, and therein lies, I think, our obligation. I am um, so grateful to be a member of this community. My whole life has been informed by my Ancestry, I'm proud of it, I'm grateful for it. It's brought me immeasurable joy and meaning. And on a personal note, your collective support of me on this on my journey um, has just touches me so deeply. I'm really unspeakably grateful. So I thank you. Be safe, be well. I wish you all great things. you're here with, you know, you can put your hand on their shoulder and, you know, maybe hold hands with that person right now. And think about the people who aren't here with you. Think about those uh, who are far away in the spirit world, uh, whether it's your mothers or your grandmothers or uh, and those who you miss who can't be here at this moment because they'll be here in, as I sing this song. As we sing this song. <laughs> as mostly you sing this song. <laughs>
I've actually written actually some, I practice actually some, I've got some Japanese words. Uh, <laughs> and I, I totally forgot them. I, I was like, because I was really impressed with art. He'd actually used a, uh, a Nishinaabe word, which is migwitch, which means thanks. And so I actually, when I fart, I, got, I do get nervous. So I want to say gong ban wa, which supposed to mean good evening. Wodashi wa, Robert Falcon Roulette. My name is Robert Falcon Roulette. I hope that's right. And uh, Ali Gato, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and in my language, uh, I just like to say, um, all my relations, thank you very much. You give me great pride uh, to be here. Uh, thank you very much. Until next time. Yes, sir, oh, okay. <laughs> Does everyone want to know what it is? So I like to jump So I just like to tell what it is. So, uh, Ruma Days by Terry Watada and uh, Mark Sakamoto. Hey. hey, so that means I have two copies. Because <laughs> I have one of my own and now I have a second one. So it means I can read it when I'm in Winnipeg and when I'm in Ottawa. But I'll tell you what, Mark, you should sign this one and I'll give it to the Prime Minister. Hey, there we go. <laughs>